Author and conference speaker Cheryl Martin on the link between our relationship with God and our fulfillment. God says, my desire is for you to be defined by your relationship with me. Not defined by your looks, not defined by whether or not you're dating someone, not defined by your job, not defined by your spouse. I want to complete you. Whether you are single or married, male or female, one thing is certain, you are filled with passions and desires that you live with every day. Some you verbalize, others you never share with anyone. Maybe it's the desire to be married, get that college degree, start your own business, write a book, or have a child. Today on Excellent Living, our host Cheryl Martin tells us in this presentation that there is nothing wrong with legitimate passions or desires, but it's important to navigate them properly. Cheryl shares some principles she's learned over the years for following your passion. If you can't stay with us until the end of the broadcast, feel free to order this complete talk on a single CD when you visit our website, excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org. Now, here's Cheryl with her first tip. Do not allow your passions to dominate or control you until you have run them through the grid of God's will. I'm going to say it one more time. It's okay to have passions and dreams, but do not allow those passions to dominate and control you until you have run them through God's grid, the grid of His will. Why do I say that? Because if our passions and dreams are of God, then God is going to be committed to making sure that everything lines up for those dreams to be fulfilled. So all about name it and claim it, it has to be in the grid of God. The other reason why we want to take time and run it through Him, we can very easily get distracted or get off course from what the God of the universe had designed for us, we're wondering why things are not clicking, why things are not working, we're off course. We are trying to force a door open, trying to go down a path that he never determined. We didn't check with him first. Lord, is this your passion or my passion? Is this a dream that you placed in my heart? Because what I say is, if God has placed the dream in our hearts, it will come to pass. But we can waste a lot of time professionally and socially if we don't consult him first. I don't know about you, but I've tried to make relationships work. Oh, I know he must be my package, but he didn't get the memo. I didn't ask God, I saw him, I wanted him. And I began to pray. I began to work it spiritually and naturally. I'm going to get close to the mother. I'm going to make sure I'm in his view. Wasted years, and I finally asked God. He said, you know, Cheryl, I was waiting on you to ask me. Oh, I know this must be God. Because we aren't able to separate what our desires and longings are and whether or not it's God. And I have found when it's something that we really, really want, it can be a job, it can be a relationship, it gets a little muddy and cloudy. Because we can make ourselves believe anything. So take that passion Take that desire and say, I must run it through the grid of God's will. James 1.5 says, if we want to tap into the wisdom of God, the mind of God, all we have to do is ask. And he will show us the best route, the best timing, and the best idea. And you know what I love? It's for free. All we have to do is ask. You know, this was a principle that my mother taught me as a child. She told me as a child, you can talk to God about anything. So as a child, we prayed for favor. 
when I was in elementary school that I would have favor with my teachers. We prayed that when I went to junior high school, God would guide my steps. So when it was time for college, I began to pray because what was my passion? In high school, I had a passion, a desire for a career in broadcasting. God is very committed. A lot of people segment God into spiritual and natural. He's concerned about my salvation. He's concerned about my fire insurance. But he's not concerned about what career, what job, what person I marry, whom I date. So I had this passion and career in broadcasting. What happened one day when I was 16 years old, I called the Christian radio station that we listened to. Who answered the phone but the general manager? I said, my name is Cheryl Martin. I have an interest in broadcasting. I was wondering if you have any internships or opportunities for students. He said, well, no, not really, not unless we think you're gifted. And so I paused and he said, are you coming in? That was a God divine connection. I didn't know that the man on the other end was the general manager. I went in and after we had an interview, he trained me how to work the board and then they gave me a three and a half hour board shift and then I did the news at the top of the hour. Mother, how did I do? You did great. That's what mothers will tell you. He became my first mentor. Here I am living in the inner city of Houston. He said, the college you should apply to is Northwestern. I'd never heard of Northwestern. Wow. I'm in Houston, Texas. My father is sixth grade education, a barber. My mother with a beauty shop in the back of the house, but God is not limited. <laughs> if God places the passion and desire in your heart, he is committed to making sure it's fulfilled. Why? Because God, before the foundation of the world, scheduled every day of our lives. He knew the birth date, and guess what? He knows our expiration date. So why wouldn't we want to lock into his plan? Why in the world would we think our dreams, our visions, our plans are more magnanimous than the God of the universe? Why would I waste my time telling God what I want? When God says, Cheryl, I've got it. He said, Northwestern. And this is what happened. When I went to look at the school, I knew exactly the kind of school in my heart I wanted to go to. So when I read about Northwestern, I'm saying, oh my Lord, what did I pray to the Lord? What in my heart did I desire? I was very specific. I said, Lord, I want to go to a private, medium-sized school that's near the big city, but not in it, and that has one of the best programs had never been to Illinois. So when I read about Northwestern, I said, Lord, this is exactly what I asked for except for two things. We did not have Northwestern money. And I overheard my father tell my mother one night, I'm not going to allow her to leave Houston to go to college. I am the only girl out of eight children. I didn't tell my father I overheard him. I just started praying. Wow. I prayed because I knew in my heart, I felt that I was going to grow spiritually as well as intellectually in another city. In my heart, I felt that it was God's will. So what happened? I did my part and I applied and God made the impossible possible. The possible is our job. I had to study. I had to fill out the applications. We do the possible. The impossibility is part of God's job description. So what happened? I got accepted and got more money 
it would have cost more for it to stay right at home and stay at home and go to Texas Southern University. And my father never once said I needed to stay in Houston. He changed my father's heart. So how do we make sure that our passions and that our desires are filtered through God's grid? To make sure that we're in his will, I have two suggestions. The first one is cultivate the art of listening. Listening to the right voice is an art. There are many voices vying out there these days in the 21st century for our attention. You've got iPods, you have iPhones, you have the internet, you have Facebook, you have Google, you have Twitter. Voices everywhere. We have the culture. We have O Magazine. We have television programs. All these voices are out here. But the main voice we need to hear is the voice of God. Do you remember the commercial that said when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen? Well, when God Almighty speaks, the one person we need to tune our ears to hear is the voice of Almighty God, recognizing when he speaks. Why? Because the choices that we make in life are long-lasting and life-changing. We can make one decision to get us off God's course, and we have to take a detour because we did not discern the voice of God. The key to our significance, the key to our success, the key to being in the right season at the right time is knowing his voice. What did John say in John 10, 27? My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Sharpening this skill is now at the top of my to-do list. You ask me what's important to me, I'm trying to understand always, in every situation, discern the voice of God. You know why? I have discovered that when I have made stupid, dumb decisions, it was for three reasons. I didn't know the voice of God. I was confused. I thought it was God and it wasn't. Or number three, I didn't bother to ask. Or I should say he told me, but I decided I want to do what I want to do. I didn't take the time to consult God. I was confused. I thought it was God. Have you ever gotten a false prophecy? Somebody thought it was God. Or God told you what to do. I know what he said, but I'm going to do this. So what does it take to cultivate the art of listening, of knowing God's voice? It takes intention, intentionality and quality time. In other words, when you're intentional, you are on purpose. You're going to make it a priority to spend time in God's word because God never contradicts his word. But we don't know his voice if we don't know his word. The people that you know their voice, you spend a lot of time with them. My mother never calls me and I say, who is this? Who is this calling? But if somebody calls your house for the first time, excuse me, who is, have you ever had people start a conversation? Excuse me, with whom am I speaking? I don't know your voice. You haven't spent any time with them. But if we really want to know the voice of God, the mind of God, we're going to step up 
our time of being in his word. If I want to know how God thinks, if I want to get God's perspective on everything, I will know his voice through his word. His will is always his word. If I'm in tune with God, somebody can come up with some idea. You, you, can, you can dismiss it immediately. That doesn't even line up with God's word. Next, I know his voice, and this is not his language. No, I know this business deal is not from God. First of all, it's unethical. I don't have to pray, don't have to fast. You're asking me to do something under the table. I know the voice of God. I don't have to ask someone to pray with me. Because I have been spending this time in the word of God, I'm not confused. My sheep hear my voice, and then they follow me. You know, that's what the successful entrepreneur Nehemiah did. Here he was, he had a good government job, taking care of the king, but he had a passion that was stirring in him. He was in a comfortable position, but he had a passion. God is aware of those passions. He prayed. He searched his own heart, made sure there was no sin in his life. And the perfect opportunity presented itself when his boss, the king, saw his countenance and said, what's up? He knew his source was God. He knew favor came from God. He quickly said a prayer under his breath. And then he had a plan. If you have a passion, you're going to have a plan. Why? Because you never know when God is going to present the opportunity. You never know when you're going to have a divine connection. He was very specific about what he wanted. The king gave him not only what he wanted, but gave him more than what he asked for. He knew the voice of God. He knew that God had placed this passion in his heart. And if you read the entire book of Nehemiah, God was right there with him, making everything click. Yes, there is some opposition. But because he had a lifestyle of seeking God, of seeking God's glory, he was able to rely on that when the opportunity presented itself. See, some of us are wondering, why isn't God working? Why isn't God fulfilling our passions? We haven't made the main thing the main thing. We're seeking the gift and not the giver. Lord, I don't want a relationship with you. I just want you to do that. I just want you to hook me up with a husband. Hook me up with a wife. Give me a good job. And he says, no, Nehemiah had a relationship with God that was strong before the opportunities came. I often pray, Lord, empty me of me. Empty me of any selfish desires, any wrong motives. Is any of that in my prayer? I need you to cleanse me of Cheryl. My agenda, Lord, I want your will to be done and mine be undone. You see, God wants to be personally involved in developing our passions and navigating us toward the best things in life, but we must listen. Again, deciding on purpose to step up our time in the Word and being in His presence. Now, this art of cultivating our listening skills is also good just learning to listen to people. I have found that many singles really don't listen because the Lord has told me one time, Cheryl, if you just shut up a minute and hear what he's saying, you'll get your answer. He's trying to get a green card. Did you hear that? You thought he was going to propose. He's, the Lord says, Cheryl, 
listen to what he is saying. He values the green card. He hasn't told you that he values you. Did you, did you hear him? One of the signs, one of the rules in my book is look at the signs and then wonder. She said, she doesn't know how to cook. Did you hear that? The interpretation is you will be eating out a lot. Did you hear what she said? You like a home cooked meal, but she just said, I don't know how to cook. She didn't say she wanted to learn how to cook. He said, I'm not ready to get married. Did you hear that? I know you've been looking in the bridal magazines, but he just said, I'm not ready. If we were to not only listen to God and people without moving forward in our own agenda, just listen. Hear what they say. Look at the signs and wonder. Stop, look, and listen before you cross the street. But if we try to move our passions, move our desire, I'm going to make it work. I have a plan. Cultivate the art of listening. And then after we've done that, we want to cultivate the skill of loving. Everybody is looking and longing for love. Many times in the wrong places with the wrong people for the wrong reasons. But on the other hand, if we make loving God the number one pursuit of our life, really focusing on him, being consumed with him, being enthralled with him, I'm convinced that everything will fall into place according to his plan. But you know what? In the natural, it doesn't make sense. See, it doesn't make sense because the culture tells us that if you are into God, if you're into God like real deep, you're going to miss out. First of all, you're not going to get married. He's going to be a dud if you're waiting on God to choose a person. You're not going to get that job. You're not going to have a successful career. None of those things are going to happen. If you are into God, you can be into God a little bit because it's the politically correct thing to go to church on a Sunday. But God is looking for a group of people who are passionate about a passionate God. How passionate was God? His love was so passionate that he said, I am going to sacrifice my only son for you to free you from every sinful habit. The only way you can be free from what enslaves you I've got to give up the son that I love for you. I call that passion. This God says, my desire is for you to be defined by your relationship with me. Not defined by your looks, not defined by whether or not you're dating someone, not defined by your job, not defined by your spouse. I want to complete you. I died for you to find your completion in me and for me to make you a whole person because Colossians 2.10 says, you are complete in him. We'll have to stop here for today. That was Cheryl Martin, the host of Excellent Living, with part one of Following Your Passion. Many times it is God who places those passions and desires in your heart, but it's important to develop the art or skill of listening to the voice of God so you can make the right choices and live without regret. 
If you'd like a copy of this entire presentation on one CD, you can order it when you visit our website, excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org. Click on Resources and select the title, Following Your Passion. The cost is $9 and shipping is included. While on our homepage, you can also sign up for our email updates and free quarterly online newsletter. If you'd like to team with us by praying and giving support to this program, you can make a financial contribution online, a donation of any amount, when you visit our homepage, excellentliving.org. Or you can send a check or money order to Excellent Living, Post Office Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland, 20825. That's P.O. Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland, 20825. All contributions are tax deductible. Let us know you appreciate this broadcast. Is your heart heavy with the cares of life, facing disappointment and depression? We'd like to walk alongside you with our prayers. Just call our prayer line at 832-766-1695. That's 832-766-1695. We will go to God on your behalf. We'd also love to hear from you if you are encouraged and strengthened by this broadcast. Send us an email at info at excellentliving.org. Next time, Cheryl will complete her teaching on following your passion. Here's a preview. If I have a small sphere of influence, let me make that the best. If I'm over the children's ministry, if I'm teaching a class, if they never call my name, you see, let me be the best at that. That and more coming up next time on Excellent Living. I'm Doris McMillan, reminding you that doing life God's way is the best way, because His way is perfect. Perfect.